Doug, hello. Wow. Iran wanted U.S. troops out of Iraq. Has Trump now granted that wish? Uh, yeah, willy-nilly, it seems that we see just how much this killing of Soleimani has changed the entire dynamic, the equation, really, of what was already an increasingly fragile relationship between the U.S. Uh, and Iraq. Uh, look, the U.S. troops that the parliament has just voted to ask the prime minister to, uh, to, to send packing, uh, there are 5,000 5, of them. And basically, they were there at the invitation of Iraq. It was an agreement between Baghdad and Washington uh, back in 2014. Let's remember, this is after the Islamic State group had overrun uh, about a third of Iraq. Basically, they had a third of the country under their control. And at the time, the, pr the previous prime minister, very desperate for some support in the fight against the Islamic State group, invited these troops onto Iraqi soil. Two years later, Iraq claimed that they had vanquished, that they the, the Islamic State presence was gone from Iraq. However, those 5,000 troops have remained on since then. Uh, why? They've remained on since then to try to prevent the resurgence of the Islamic State group, because while they might have been vanquished, they weren't uh, completely gone, and there's always a possibility of regrouping, and we have seen some evidence of that. And at the same time, to train Iraqi forces uh, to be able to uh, do their own defense, essentially. So they remain there. But what the killing has done is basically it has been grist to the mill of Iraqi hardliners, Iraqi hardliners, and often pro-Iranian Iraqi hardliners who have always been, from the very beginning, staunchly opposed to the U.S. presence. What it has also done, you could almost say miraculously, it has forged a sense of solidarity between these hardliners who hated seeing the U.S. troops there and moderates who until now had been inclined, even though they might not have loved Washington and U.S. troops being on their soil, had been inclined to let them stay because they thought that Washington was at least a counterweight to Iranian influence and was the lesser of, uh, of two evils, so to speak. That's all gone after this killing. You had 170 lawmakers at the, at, the, at the last count, uh, who have voted in favor. That's more than a quorum. And what does that mean? Parliament itself does not have the authority to kick the U.S. troops out. What it does, what this uh, a resolution essentially does, is it goes, punts it to the prime minister's office, uh, Prime Minister Mahdi's office, and it's basically demanding that he now, quote, cancel the request that was originally made I t back in 2014 to the international coalition fighting the Islamic State group to invite those American troops in. Uh, Mahdi will be signing that, presumably, because earlier in Parliament, he himself urged the lawmakers to do all they can to take measures to end the U.S. military presence in Iraq. So he himself, showing his pro-Iranian leanings and tendencies, falling into line with these lawmakers. But I will note this, Nadia, uh, not everyone in Parliament was on board with this. Uh, like you said, Iran wanted them to leave, and you had the pro-Iranian Shiite factions in Parliament. Those lawmakers, pro-Iranian, they are the ones who almost to a person supported ousting the U.S. troops in Iraq. However, there are Sunni Muslim, Sunni Muslim factions and Kurdish factions in parliament who were not in that vote, who did not take part in that vote, and in fact were subject to not so veiled threats from some of those Shiite lawmakers saying, if you do not vote or if you prevent, take measures to prevent us from, uh, from making these uh, forces leave, uh, you in some cases will be prevented from entering Baghdad. One of the militia actually threatened that, not a lawmaker, but one of the militia. These lawmakers tend to support these militias. The ones who voted today tend to be predominantly of those Shiite factions closely tied and very pro-Iranian. It's watch this space, but you can basically assume that the measures, the train has left the station and those troops now, the clock is ticking on how much longer they'll be on Iraqi soil, those U.S. troops. And meanwhile, Tehran is defiant in the face of new threats from Donald Trump. Uh, and it's turning to the nuclear deal as its first response. Yeah. We know we have seen uh, several steps ever since uh, Donald Trump withdrew from the nuclear uh, accord, then imposed crippling sanctions on Iran. Uh, we have seen Iran slowly being pulling back, basically facing up to the new concrete realities in the region, pulling back and reneging on its commitments to that deal, because basically saying, if you, the U.S., are pulling out of the deal and the Europeans can't help us to, uh, to adhere to the terms of that deal— then what is, why is it our, in our interest to even stay in it? So slowly they've been pulling back in little sort of dribs and drabs. And now what they've basically said today, and this is another big, possibly eventually big fallout from, uh, from the killing of Soleimani, is they are going to continue, very much extend what they're calling the retreat from the nuclear accord. So even though the Europeans on record, France, Germany, the UK, even some other allies in the region, are all still at least rhetorically hoping to somehow salvage that nuclear accord, it seems at this point more and more dead in the water as the circumstances and the political realities born of this strike 
on the ground now make it all but impossible to salvage that deal. We're having a further retreat today as I speak. And briefly, if you would, and if you, if you can, um, where does this leave Donald Trump? Where does this leave Donald Trump? Hunkering down right now. Donald Trump's in an election year. He's also, as we know, not just facing impeachment, he's been impeached, facing an imminent trial in the Senate where he has Republican support. Uh, it's not, it doesn't take a cynic to say that obviously electoral politics have factored into this equation, whether or not Donald Trump wants to explicitly acknowledge that. Donald Trump, in all of his past, almost all of his past policies, has played to his base has played to what he thinks will gain him the greatest political advantage, uh, at least that is what his critics would say, and not actually placing the nation's interests above all else, but rather thinking about what in the here and now is going to gain me uh, the most support among those who already see me as their champion. This is a case in point, this policy right now. Donald Trump has made the threat. He's chosen 52 targets that he says he is ready to hit fast and hard if the Iranians were to retaliate against American military personnel, diplomats, or any uh, interest on the ground there. Uh, the Iranians, for their part, also hunkering down. Neither side is budging. As far as the parliamentary vote is concerned, Washington's official line on that is that uh, Iraq is essentially shooting itself in the foot because uh, by forcing those U.S. troops to leave, it is going to be opening up a real vacuum, which could invite the Islamic State group back in and could also place Iraq, while it says it wants full sovereignty, much more firmly under the grip of Iran. Dr. Herbert, thank you very much for your analysis.